found the uh, smoking gun here. Uh, there was a uh, recent scientific study uh, published in Antiviral Research, 10 February 2020, by three scientists from France and one from Montreal, who did a uh, genetic analysis of the uh, Wuhan coronavirus, and they said, quote, it may provide a gain of function of the 219 coronavirus for efficient spreading in the human population compared to other viruses. Let me repeat that. May provide a gain of function to the 2019 coronavirus for efficient spreading in the human population compared to other uh, lineage coronaviruses. Gate, what that, that's uh, the smoking gun for a uh, biologic, offensive biological warfare uh, agent. Gain of function uh, properties uh, is uh, a tip off. It's only useful for. Uh, offensive biological warfare uh, uh, activity, uh, and it is typically conducted in either a, uh, it's so dangerous, in either a BSL-4 or a BSL-3 facility, and there in Wuhan, you have the only uh, BSL-4 facility in uh, China. So I, I think it's clear uh, it, it came out of uh, this lab. Gain of function, uh, it's... Uh, means it's DNA genetically engineered uh, to be more lethal and more uh, effect, uh, 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 more infectious. Clearly what, what we're seeing now with uh, this uh, uh, coronavirus, uh, it, it is basically SARS, which is already a weaponized version of, uh, of a coronavirus that has leaked out of that laboratory at least twice before. And then it is given gain-of-function properties uh, which basically means it can travel by air for at least uh, six feet and uh, is is more lethal. SARS lethality was about 10 percent. Lancet estimates here the lethality is about 15 percent. If you uh, uh, disaggregate Chinese government uh, figures, it's about 17 percent. And there's a British health, public health authority who said he thinks it's about 18 percent. So I think that's uh, a fair and accurate statement. Second, uh, we have uh, an article here from uh, the uh, NatMed, 15, uh, 2015, December 21. Uh, SARS-like cluster of circulating back coronises show potential for human emergence. This was at the... Uh, University of North Carolina, uh, they ha in Chapel Hill, they have a biosafety lab uh, level three there, and I have previously condemned them uh, for using gain of function uh, work uh, uh, on MERS, which is the Middle East Repertory, Respiratory Syndrome. Uh, it is like SARS, only more dangerous. It has uh, a 33% lethality rate. And they were doing gain of function work there to, to make it even more lethal. Well, it turns out if you read the uh, the article, they admit that they were doing this with uh, with SARS, that they were giving it a gain of function activity. And it turns out part of their team was a uh, a researcher from China, Zheng Li Li Shi. Key Laboratory of Special Pathogens and Biosafety, Wuhan Institute of Virology, Chinese Academy of Sciences. And they gave a grant uh, to the University of North Carolina to get their uh, uh, scientists in on this extremely dangerous Nazi-type biological warfare work. So it appears that what happened was, uh, instead of stealing this technology... Uh, China bought it, and they bought it from the uh, lab there at the uh, University of North Carolina. They put their person in there. They took the technology, and they brought it back to the Wuhan lab. It's right there. This fellow works for the Wuhan lab. Um, and it also appears that uh, the uh, North Carolina lab uh, got uh, cells from Fort Detrick, which is the U.S. Uh, 
major facility for the research, development, testing, stockpiling of biological weapons. Fort Detrick is the U.S. equivalent of Port and Down. So that's where they got some of their cells here. And they made it clear uh, the work that they were doing was to increase the pathogenicity of original SARS by giving it this gain of function uh, activity. The final uh, piece of uh, evidence here is uh, uh, Archive of uh, Virology uh, 2010. Uh, and this is uh, research done with the Australian Animal Health Laboratory. And again, the uh, Wuhan Institute of Virology, where they DNA genetically engineered SARS and HIV. Okay, to, to make a weapon. And uh, they got a grant here from the Chinese uh, Ministry of Science, Technology, et cetera, to do this. So once again, they, they brought the, bought the technology. They didn't steal it uh, back to uh, Wuhan. And so my reading of these articles, basically, these uh, three articles, is that they took the technology from this death factory at North Carolina. They took the technology from this uh, Australian uh, uh, research project. They brought it back to uh, the Wuhan BSL-4 and tried to genetically engineer it all together as a sort of a turbocharged biological warfare weapon that would, would consist with, of SARS, which is already a uh, weaponized coronavirus, uh, gain of function uh, properties and HIV, and as you know, uh, those Indian scientists already did an analysis of the coronavirus, uh, and, and it was published online. I read it, and HIV was clearly uh, in their AIDS that, that gives AIDS. I saw the pictures, so that I think is what uh, we are dealing with here. Uh, a, a we've never seen. Uh, at least released in the public, a biological warfare agent this dangerous, except the uh, Amerithrax uh, that was uh, in October 2001 after the 9-11-2001 terrorist attacks. Uh, that was super weapons grade uh, anthrax, uh, 100 grams of spore. Uh, it too traveled in the air. Uh, it it, it seem to be based on uh, nanotechnology, uh, and we hadn't seen any. And at the time, I publicly stated it came out of the U.S. Biological Warfare Weapons Program and probably Fort Detrick, which was later uh, confirmed. I said that about the uh, first week in November. Even I was even on the BBC saying that. And then an order was given to silence me. Uh, I was blackballed <laughs> off all... Uh, mainstream news media in the United States, uh, Britain, Europe, you name it. So uh, despite the fact my viewpoints are all over the world, no mainstream news media will touch me. So um, the Amerithrax, of course, was extremely dangerous, but not as infectious as what we're seeing here. So in a nutshell, that's where I see it as of today.